celebrates 121 years of independence. In Rio de Janeiro, President Vargas arrives to review the growing strength of the nation's modern army. of the Brazilian Air Force form an umbrella for big mobile artillery units rumbling through the streets of the capital. Crack divisions mobilized for duty overseas. In Canada, women in overalls are a familiar sight. Replacing men in war industries, these wives and sisters of soldiers overseas are playing an increasingly important role in helping the United Nations win the war. Tossing red-hot rivets with all the skill of veterans, these girls are helping Canada turn out 10,000-ton victory ships. workers in their white uniforms or tinsmiths covering a ship's ventilator. They know their jobs. The spirit of the Canadian woman is, you Salem, we'll build them. In the United States, the women's army is taking over more operations jobs to relieve men for combat duty. Here at an Air Force replacement base, the WACs, as they're called, serve as ground crews, service motors, repair ships. Today, women of the United Nations are backing the attack, serving wherever they're needed. Physical fitness is the goal of the 1,600 Naval Aviation Cadets. Today, they climax a 12-week basic training course with a six-mile foot race across the open country. This is the kind of endurance test America's future birdmen must pass before they can win their wings. Tomorrow, they'll fly the plane, but today, they must first use their legs. <laughs> Motion picture stars arrive in Washington to aid in the nation's campaign to sell war bonds. Riding in army cars, the celebrities parade through the streets of the capital. Stars known to cinema fans all over the world. James Cagney. Lucille Ball. Fred Astaire. From atop the Washington Monument, we look down into an arena as thousands gather to cheer their favorites. Harpo Marx, Greer Garson, a parade of the Army's famous jeeps, and the slogan is, Back the Attack. Little Mickey Rooney and Judy Garland all aiding the cause as the people of America invest in government bonds to win the war. Mrs.
Franklin D. Roosevelt, in the field uniform of the American Red Cross, visits United States-based hospitals in the South Pacific. Popular wherever she goes, the president's wife is the subject of many a camera snapshot. tireless traveler, Mrs. Roosevelt's presence in Australia and New Zealand serves as a tonic and an inspiration to wounded American soldiers convalescing thousands of miles from home. of Nazi Europe through Italy by the American Fifth Army. Embarking for Salerno, just below Naples, the great amphibious force of Lieutenant General Mark Clark strikes for the north, even as Montgomery's Eighth Army rolls virtually unopposed through the south. <laughs> sunset, the huge convoy gets underway. Ships extending over a thousand square miles of the Tyrrhenian Sea. General Clark, 5th Army Commander, and Vice Admiral Henry Hewitt, commanding the fleet. Salerno, then Naples, is their objective. Already, the British 8th occupies the boot of Italy. As Montgomery plunges northward to join the Americans, Clark's forces strike for Salerno. <laughs> Aboard ship, Ranger battalions study relief maps of the Italian coast. Every mountain and every valley is memorized as they steam for Salerno. During the night, the 5th Army swarms ashore. In the faint light of dawn, under attack from German batteries emplaced in the hills, they dig in, establish their beachhead, and fight back. sunrise, ships and supplies are still pouring in. Here, the biggest battle of the Mediterranean campaign develops around this initial thrust into metropolitan Italy. Pushed back time and again by superior Nazi forces, the Fighting Fifth is reinforced on schedule. units are brought up, and the Americans take the offensive. General Clark directs the attack from the beach itself. Meanwhile, the Italian fleet steams for Allied ports. General Eisenhower and Admiral Cunningham see the terms of surrender carried out to the letter. Many of the units tie up at once embattled Malta, the greatest naval victory of the war. Today...